when gravestones are choked by a foggy mist, and zombies walk searching for graves. When saucers land in peaceful towns, and the citizens all turn to food, Rubich Porter has started a film in her cinema just for you. <laughs> well, hello! I'm Eulogy Mortem, and you're here in the Mad Monster Cinema Ghoul's Night Out. That's right, honey. It's just gonna be us ghouls tonight. And if I got a feature picked out for you, it's wonderful. It's called Phone Call from a Stranger. And you know what? This movie has more bitches in it than a kennel. Ha! <laughs> oh, anyway, it has Betty Davis in a teeny tiny itty bitty little part. That she milks like a cow. And it has Shelley Winters, you remember her. She was the big lady that got stuck in the Christmas tree in the side adventure. Well, anyway, it deals with the story of an attorney who finds out his wife is cheating on him, so he abandons his wife and kids to get on a plane to go somewhere else, and along the way he meets an alcoholic doctor, an ex vaudeville star, um, a woman who I think was a whore at one time, I'm not sure, and each one of them has a different story, and then the plane crashes, and then he has to call the family, but, oh anyway, it's like a big old soap opera, it'll all come together in the end. Anyway, grab your box of popcorn, and get you a soda, and just curl up nice and warm with me, and... Let's go on into the cinema and watch tonight's feature, Phone Call from a Stranger. Anything on the 1210? How many? One. Nothing on the 1210, I'm afraid, but I can put you on the Grand Canyon Airways at 1230 if you don't mind a local. And where's that to? Same place, Los Angeles. All right. Round trip? A one way. Name? Uh, Collins. Joseph H. Collins. Is it in yet? It's pulling in now. I want to make a phone call. On the other side of the newsstand.
leave it. Where are you? I left a note there on the table, but it occurred to me you might, might think I'd gone off to do something foolish. It's nothing like that. It's just that I... Well, I couldn't stand it any longer. I'll have to figure out another way of living without you, that's all. Where are you, David? Please. Just tell the kids that I was called away suddenly on a case. I'll work out some other explanation when I've had a chance to think things over. Just don't let them know yet. Where are you going? I'll let you know when I get there. Tell them it looked like a rather long case. Then they won't begin asking questions until we've got our story set. Will you do that? Oh, Dave, darling, please. Will you do it? Of course. David, don't go away. Please don't. Why not? You don't think you'll be lonely for long, do you? Dave, Dave. Haven't you ever made one mistake in your life? It's no use, Janie. I didn't call to argue the matter again, particularly over a public phone. Just look out for the kids, that's all. I'll let you hear from me in a day or so. Good night. Attention, please. Grand Canyon Airways, flight 1011 for Los Angeles. Some trouble? Oh, no, just in late, that's all. Is it the weather? What's wrong with the weather? How should I know what's wrong with the weather? That's what I'm asking you. You come in late, you go out late. You think it's all right to fly in all this rain? No, I don't think the rain matters. Not even at night? No, I don't think so. But how do they keep them from bumping into each other? I don't know exactly. But they must have some way worked out. You really think they know what they're doing? No, I'm sure they do. And if there's any danger, I'm sure they wouldn't send us out. I hope you're right. This will be my first time up. I certainly wouldn't want it to be my last. Better. You're not really scared, are you? I'd be okay if I could only figure out one thing. What's that? What holds it up there? What do you care? That's their business. They can't blame you no matter what happens. You mean they can't sue me even if it falls? They can't. And I'm a lawyer, too. What am I worried about? Let's have a wedge of pie with that coffee, huh? Would you people mind if these gentlemen sat at this table, too? No, oh, go ahead. I, 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 I beg your pardon. Uh, don't mind me, lady. I'm just practicing. I'm an ex-wolf. Coffee for me, doll baby. The same for me, please. You just come in on flight 1011? I'll say, like we was on a roller coaster. What do you mean? The last 50 miles, upside down. Is he kidding? It was a little bumpy. A little bumpy? Get this. Just outside of Chicago, we hit an air pocket. We must have dropped a thousand feet. Now, we're all strapped in to see what the hostess ain't. Well, she hits the ceiling with the top of her permanent. She must have hung there for five minutes. I could see the papers tomorrow already, among those identified. Ugh. 
So pardon me for asking, but is that supposed to be funny? No, not very. Well, I'm afraid I don't think it's funny at all. Joking about people might get killed. This is this young lady's first flight. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you, lady. I was just clowning around a little, that's all. Yeah, well, let's not clown about this one till we get there. Oh, we'll get there. Pilot's a personal friend of mine. This guy hates his wife so much, he's not going to take that airplane two feet off the ground if he thinks there's any chance of her collecting his insurance. <laughs> Telephone call for Mr. Trask. Will Mr. David Trask please report to ticket counter for telephone call? You're a traveling salesman, aren't you? How did you guess? I don't know. I guess the way you kid around, maybe. Salesmen always kid a lot. I bet I can guess what you are, too. What? A doctor? That's right. Hey, what about him? He told me already. He's a lawyer. Uh, you don't waste any time, huh, Jack? <laughs> Hey, how do you do it? I don't know. I just sort of a knack, I guess. I like to figure out about people. You want to know something else? What? You're all married. Does it show from here? Aren't you? I am. I'm good and married. Aren't you? Yes. I knew it. I can pick a married man from as far as I can see him, unfortunately. You want me to guess what you are? I don't know whether I do or not. You're an actress, aren't you? Thank you, Docky. You scared me there for a minute. Musical comedy? Musical comedy and nightclubs. Hey, no kidding. What do you do, sing and dance? Both. Uh, did any of you happen to see Let's Go? That was the show in New York. I saw it about a year ago, wasn't it? Were you in that? Don't you remember? Well, let me see. Uh... Um, thank you so much, Daddy. Pardon? That's the name of the song I sang. Thank you so much, Daddy. I remember it. I saw it with Mrs. Trask last March at the Majestic Theater. You remember my routine? Of course. Let me tell you about this number. This is the only song I got in the show. Then out of town, some head shrinker wants to throw it out. Then I got this idea. And, brother, from then on, it was in but good. Yeah, what'd you do with it? I did a strip with it. Don't you remember? I remember it. And you forget a beautiful song like that? Friends, are you distressed over today's high cost of funerals? Does it seem as though every time you turn around, money is flying out the window? Do you have a recently deceased loved one and know where to put them? then you need Liam's Funeral Parlor. Here at Liam's Funeral Parlor, you will find young, happy employees. A state-of-the-art embalming facility. Take advantage of our previously owned casket line or ride to your final reward in one of our finest automobiles. Liam's is also an authorized you died hearse rental dealer. Let them know you care enough to do it yourself. Imagine how happy your family will be when you have finally found a funeral plan you can afford. We now offer 90 days save as cash and a layaway plan. I am Mossy Liam, Funeral Director for Liam's Funeral Parlor, just off Highway 9 on Mortem Mountain. I've been away for over a year now. You know how it is when you get that old feeling? I can't get back to him fast enough. Okay, we're moving. We're rolling out to take off. Did you get a long run in that show? Oh, lousy. It died in six weeks. What did you do then? Not much of anything. That's why I'm going back. You heard of success stories, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Well, me, I'm different. I'm a no success story. Didn't you ever try for another show? Sure, all of them. I even auditioned for Rogers and Hammerstein a couple of months ago. Mary Martin's part in South Pacific. Well, what did they say? 
Thanks very much. I'm really surprised. I thought you were very good. I should have thought you'd be a great success after that. Thanks. Not after the way I got started. I may have thought I was a singer, but after that show, I was strictly a stripper, and that's all. Not that I got anything against stripping. But for the real deal, you gotta be able to keep them on. Take Dinah Shaw, for instance. She could sing in a Persian rug, and it'd be all right. Hey, we stopped. We've reached the runway, I guess. Besides, if you gotta take them off when you sing, there's just so far you can go. Then, boom, the cops are chasing you off the back fence. Council is quite a fast operator, huh? Well? Okay, so far. Do you go through life like this? Worrying, you mean? Worrying unnecessarily. About things that you can't do anything about. Well, I don't know how necessary it is, but airplanes get a very high priority on my worrying list. You know, I doubt if there's anything more consistently uncomfortable than a fine, modern luxury airliner. But the New York subway scares me more. There's one very important thing you forget about the subway. In case anything happens, the most you can fall is up. Do you want me to strip her? No, never. Well, I go to burlesque now and then, you know, just to kind of keep up on a technique. But I never thought I'd meet one socially. <laughs> and you know, you never can tell. I was reading one of these movie magazines the other day, you know, about the big star. I forget her name, but you always see a picture sitting beside a pool or in a bathing suit saying hello to Santa Claus at Christmas time, you know. Yeah. It turns out that she teaches a Sunday school class. You're wearing out your nerves for nothing. Why don't you try and relax a little while? Aren't you sleepy? Are you kidding? Well, I'm afraid I am. You don't mind if I take a nap, do you? No, go ahead. You sleep, I'll watch. Mr. Trask? Hmm? My name is Carr. My stage name's Pinky Gay, but my real name's Carr. Mrs. Bianca Carr. Mrs. Carr. As long as we're spending the night together, we might as well know each other's names. Legs closed in, we're going into Vega. When? Now. Adjust your seat belts, please. We're going to land in a few minutes. We're going to land at Salt Lake City? Salt Lake Airport's closed in. We're going to land at Vega until the weather conditions improve. Oh, he's nice through the air with the greatest of ease. He's an airing young man on the flying trapeze. In action, the great soul of the girl, lead us, please. In the light, make the world away.
Brother, they just lost me. From now on, I walk. What's she look like? Well, we can get out of here, all right. Anytime they say we can get in there. I'll tell Salt Lake. <laughs> How many more days are we gonna be here, Skipper? Not much longer. Don't do me any favors, chum. Hey, you know what? I just got an idea. Hey, we never even heard of each other four hours ago, and now we're just like a regular four musketeers. Talking together, chewing the fat, talking about our families, everything, just like we was old friends. <laughs> well, that's the way it always is. You know, as soon as there's a little trouble, everybody gets real friendly. Start huddling together. Just like horses in a storm. Yeah, what's this four musketeers? Inflation? Well, you know what I mean. Don't you think it'd be a nice idea to have a little record of it? Oh, maybe like a last man club. We'll meet together the same day every year until we're 180 years old. Here's what I mean. Here's my card. Maybe it's not such a bad idea. We'll get together someday and have a few laughs, huh? Oh, wait a minute. Get this. Edmund Vincent Hogue. Hey, Vince, you had a clink on the last one, didn't you? Listen, Mousie. Anybody who calls herself Binky Gay and is such a discussion under a distinct handicap. What about you, Doc? Trasky? No, I'm afraid I haven't any permanent address just now. Oh, well, how long are you going to be in L.A.? Well, I don't know yet. Okay, then you call us. We'll make you chairman. What about you, Gypsy Rosalie? Well, I'll have to tattoo it on somebody. I don't happen to have a card with me. Look, now here. Here's one for each of us. Just write out your name, address, and phone number. Well, so that's it. What? So much trouble for a number. Why didn't you just ask me? No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Unless, of course, you insist. No, I'll fight it for a while. See, I've been telling you guys I was married. Would you like to see how married I really am? Wow. Any complaints on that? Who are you, Harry James? Uh, do you think the boys are old enough to take it? I don't know why not. They're in no more danger of getting drafted than you are. Mrs. Hope? It ain't her uncle. Congratulations. Shot the Trasky. How did an old crock like you ever tie onto a dish of cream cheese like that? I've got that certain ingredient, Miss Lee, with the locked in flavor. Locked in is right. Well, here you are, but I think they're more liable to call your house than mine. Oh, deal me out of this one. Hey, you got a picture, Mrs. Fortness? Sorry. You want to play canasta or just sit here and think about your wife?
be such a jerk. There's no Prince Charming. Imagine him showing a picture of his wife around like that. It's a matter of taste. His is still better than hers, I should say. Will you have a drink? Oh, no, thank you. Want to make some money? What do you mean? You're a lawyer, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, this is a case. Hey, you don't mind taking a case out in the rain, do you? No. But don't you think it would be better if we waited until we got to town? No, I don't. I don't want to wait another minute. When we were bouncing around up there, I got to thinking. The kind of clear, simple, uncomplicated thoughts you think when you know that death isn't so far away after all. That's when everything falls into its proper perspective. When you can see what's important in your life and what's not. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I think I do. Well, then, if you're married with a family, you begin to see that there's nothing else on the face of the earth so important as their love and respect. You got any kids? Two girls. Mine's a boy. You know how it is. You know that warm, comfortable feeling you get at night, after dinner? The doors are closed and the rest of the world shut out. It's just you and her and the kids sitting around together. You know the feeling? I know it. Well, when that's gone, you've no idea how lonely life is. Well, what's the problem? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to the district attorney and tell him the story. A true story. Now, what I want to know is, what do I have to be prepared for when I tell him this story? What will I actually have to face? Go on. Now, do you drink at all? Sure. I just don't feel like one right now. Five years ago, on the 7th, which was a Saturday, dance night at the club, I felt like more than one. I was somewhat better off then than I am now. One of the best practices in town. Smart, well-behaved boy. And without any doubt whatever, I had the best wife in the whole history of the world. No, no women. Just Jerry and myself. They told me quite frankly that they didn't want me. <laughs> of course not. It's not a woman's business. Now, when a boy has reached his 12th birthday, it's up to his father to handle the situation. Oh, well, Jerry's read books, of course, and he's heard the older boys talk. But until he's done it himself, he simply cannot realize what it means to land a marlin. Where are you going? Guaymas. Best fishing on this coast. Telephone, doctor. Oh, dear. Very nice. Thank you, dear. It was lovely. Excuse me. The hospital? I hope not. That Mexican kid, probably. Do you have a call for Dr. Fortness? Yes, this is Dr. Fortness. Very well. Tell him I'll be there shortly. It's the Mexican child. Oh, I'll go with you. No, of course not. You stay here and take care of Claire. You'll excuse me, won't you? See you later, darling. Good night, kids. Good night. Good night. Go along and drive him, Tim. I think I will. It's my case almost as much as his anyway. Luther, take care of the girls, will you? OK. But it looks like a complicated way to get out of paying a check. <laughs> will you excuse me? Anyway, sir. Thank you. I'll call the car. Thank you. Are you all right, darling? Of course. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> of course I'm all right. You go on back to your table. Thank you. We'll call you as soon as we're through to see if you're still here. Do you think he's all right? Well, sure. What do you mean? He's had a great deal to drink. Well, of course not. He doesn't show it, but he has. That's the way he is sometimes. No, no. And if there's the slightest question about it, he won't even wash up. Bob's no fool. Besides, I'll be there. I'm washing up, too. Come on, let's go. Coming, Mother. I 
he's practically okay. Forget it. See you later, darling. Take it easy, will you? This is only an appendectomy. I'm watching it. What's the matter with you? There's no traffic at this hour. I was wanted to know how fast this car will go. This is as good a time as any to find out. Kidding, Bob. You better stop the car, Bob. Let me take it. Don't be silly. I'm not being silly. This kind of driving's nutty. Okay, if it scares you. Is this all right? I believe you are tight. That's what I might have expected. Sleep. A little while. Couldn't have had a much closer call, you know. I know. Do you feel like seeing a man from the DA's office? I can put him off if you don't. I don't mind. That's all right. You can tell him to come back this afternoon. Oh, it's all right. Fortness is awake now. This is Mrs. Fortness, Mr. Thompson. Good morning, Miss Fortness. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. If you'll excuse me. I hate to push in on you like this. I understand. You know what happened, don't you? They're dead, aren't they? All three of them. Dr. Brooks and the two men in the other car. I never saw such a wreck. You must have been going 80. You were driving, weren't you? No. Are you sure of that? What do you mean? You were thrown out of the left side of the car. Dr. Brooks was driving the car. You got anybody else who can testify to that? Yes, I can. Dr. Brooks was behind the wheel when the car left the club. And since then, nothing but loneliness. Good morning. <laughs> the high altitude affects my ears. <laughs> 
All right, all aboard, everybody. We're gonna fly ten miles nonstop this time. <laughs> Keep moving, Gypsy. It's too early in the morning for one of your performances. Drop that, will you? <laughs> oh, better watch out, Doc. Your husband's right behind you. <laughs> what a clown. <laughs> Don't worry too much about it. We'll be able to handle it somehow. I'm not worrying now. That's the spirit. Ask you, she's waiting for you. Will you do me a favor? Ride right on the roof the rest of the way. Huh. Sit in. I'll sit here. You don't mind? Not in the least. Think you'll be okay this time? Sure. The pilot just told me it's all downhill from here. I got my wings now. Hey, uh, you gonna sing someplace in L.A.? Why, you dirty old man. What do you mean old? I got a good mind to write your wife. Go ahead, she can't read. Anybody marries you, I don't believe she can even see. Oh, she's okay now. She's beginning to get insulting again. Don't get tough with me, babe. I'll jam your zipper. Yuck, 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 yuck. Well, look, I won't say goodbye now, but just in case we miss each other when we get in, uh, don't forget, the four musketeers. I won't. And hey, you better call us, because we can't call you. Maybe we can get together someday and have a few laughs. I'll call. How about you, Gypsy? I'll ask my husband what he thinks about it. Oh. Well, you can ask him, but don't bring him. <laughs> <laughs> now that guy talks. Daddy? Yeah, him and his big mouth. What about it? He's a fake. How? If I really batter the night, him, he'd be out of here like a scalded cat. On the of his wife? How about I don't know? He doesn't want any part of any other day, that's for sure. Could it possibly be that he loves her? You really think she is? His what? His wife. Don't you? I don't know. Don't get it. There's something funny about that whole setup somewhere. Don't you think so? It never occurred to me, no. A lump like him with a jug like her. It does seem possible that she could have done better. Done better? It looks like she lost a bet. You know what's funny about it? What? He's happy. That guy's really happy. Why not? Instead of advertising what he's got, he'd be a lot smarter sitting out in front of his house with a shotgun. Still figuring people out, huh? I can't help it. I can't rest till I got him pegged. You want to hear about you? Oh, I don't believe so, thank you. Well, you were a cinch. I had you pegged almost before If you don't you mind, I'd rather not discuss it. All right. You want to hear about the doc? What about him? He's in big trouble. Why do you say that? Well, he's a pretty smart guy. He's worried. Smart guys don't worry about pimples. Take something awfully important to make a smart guy worry. Go on. You know what else I think? What? He made a deal. A deal? Some kind of deal with himself. He's a pretty smart guy. He knows nobody can have 100% of anything. So he made a deal with himself. He settled for half. Am I right? Yeah. What's that? Oh, clouds. It's nothing. It's a funny time of year for that much ice. We're getting everything this trip. You know that's what I'm doing? Making a deal? Selling for a percentage. Had mother-in-law trouble. You ever heard of it? Yes, I've heard of it. You ever hear of Sally Carr? Yes, Vaudeville. That's right, back in the old palace days. Big mama singer, heart of gold stuff. Remember? Sure, I remember. She could really belt out a song, couldn't she? She was wonderful. That's my mama-in-law. Really? Every hour I spend with her has been like five rounds of Sugar Ray Robinson. You see, she's still trying to hang on to what she used to be. She's got this broken down nightclub out in Hollywood. She's the MC and Mike's the floor show. Mike's my husband and a very nice guy. 
hear her tell of it. It's Danny Kay and Sophie Tucker, only better. See what I'm up against? Yes, I see. You can imagine how she took it when Mike walked in with me. But why? You're a professional, too. Well, maybe to me, but not to her. I was with the USO troop overseas. That's where I met Mike. That didn't count with her. Because she says if it's free, soldiers will look at anything. Isn't that rather a fine distinction? Oh, that wasn't it. The truth of it is she didn't like me on sight any more than I liked her. It was bing, bing, bing all the way. You know what I mean? Well, what about Mike? What was he doing all this time? What's a husband usually doing in a spot like that? Refereeing with Mumsy in one corner and Sugar Lump in the other. So what then? Well, then pretty soon all three of us are hanging on the ropes. Then I get this bright idea how to straighten out the mess. I'll go to New York and show the big town what I really got. Make a monkey out of the old bag. So I do the same and make a monkey out of myself. Joke over. You think we ought to turn back? I don't think yet. It gets much worse. So now you're going back to make a deal. Give me Mike and a couple of kids and she can have all the rest. You think you can take Mom now? After your loneliness, I can take anything. Anything else, sir? Yes, would you write out a telegram for me, please? Certainly, sir. Make it a day letter to Mrs. Jane Trask. 1846 Oak Avenue, Midland City, Iowa. Dear Jane, my address for the next few days will be Wilshire Hotel, Los Angeles. Hugs and kisses for the children. Signed, Dave. Get that off right away. Put it on my bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Don't forget, the Four Musketeers. and a couple of kids and she can have all the rest of it.
Well, when that's gone, you've no idea how lonely life is. Get me Marino 3637. Hello, Mrs. Fortness? Yes, this is Mrs. Fortness speaking. You don't know me, Mrs. Fortness, but I was a passenger on the plane with Dr. Fortness. He and I came to know each other rather well, and I thought perhaps you might like to hear something of that last night. Hello, friends. This is Sister Beth Leeham from the great God Almighty, sweet Jesus, firebrand, holiness, church. I am so happy to be speaking with y'all tonight. Uh, this will be my last vocal broadcast before I go live on the air with my sister Yuji and her wonderful mad monster cinema. Uh, you know, there's always been something odd about Yuji, and I just haven't been able to get my hands around it. <laughs> anyway, the pastor of the church has asked me to go over a few things before this Sunday, first of all. Sister Bertha Belch, y'all know Bertha. Yeah, Sister Bertha Belch, she's the head of our African ministry. Well, she's going to be speaking to us at the church Sunday night. So if you want to go hear Bertha Belch all the way from Africa, you need to be there Sunday evening. Now, the pastor has also asked me to address those of you who have been using your dump boxes for the toys for tots. Well, it seems as though some of you have been taking your dumps in the rectory. The pastor has asked me to address you and tell you that if you feel the need to take your dump in the church, please take your dump in the Sunday school room. Last but not least, ladies of the auxiliary, the pastor says that some of you have been addressing him about having sticky drawers in the office. Well, he talked to the janitor, and the janitor said the only way he can get in any of the ladies' drawers is by banging it hard from behind. So the pastor has asked, ladies, if you find yourself with sticky drawers in the office, please call the janitor to bang on the behind until he can get in them. Once again, this has been Sister Beth Leeham, and I am so happy to be talking with you. I'll see you real soon on Yugi Mortem's Mad Monster Cinema. This might very well have done for me. You have a son. I have two daughters. <laughs> He's not coming back. What do you mean? He's gone away. Run away. I just found this. But why? He thinks I did it. He thinks that I drove him to it. He hates me. But how does he figure that? I don't know. I mean, it's... It's too mixed up to tell you. I, I shouldn't have said anything about it, but... I... I just can't seem to think straight. With everything happening at once. <laughs> Can't you, can't you think of something I might be able to do? 
I don't believe so, thank you. Would you like me to talk to the police? No, that wouldn't be any use. I wouldn't want him back like that. Only if he misses me someday and, and wants to come back. Is this Jerry? Yes. I'm terribly sorry to have imposed this on you. You deserve better. I do appreciate your coming here. And very much what you've told me. I, I don't like to leave you alone like this. No, I'm all right now. Thank you. Really. Would you mind if I telephone this evening? Just in case there should be something? If you want to. But please don't feel that you need. You may think of something. Right, madam. Are there any ships leaving here today for South America? No passenger ships, sir. And what about freighters? Yes, two. The Chilean star at midnight from berth 75 in San Pedro, and the Santiago at 11 o'clock from berth 160 in Wilmington. Thank you. Well, no sign of them here. We'd have seen them, I'm sure. They watch these ships pretty close these days. They got guards. Excuse me. Yeah? Oh, yeah? Hold on a minute. They got them over at Pedro, Pier 75. The watchman's holding them for you. 75? That's right. Thank you. Hello, Mark. Be right over. Jerry Fortness, I'm a friend of your father's. I was on the plane with him the other night. You were in that crash? That's right. Your father and I became very good friends that night. And that's why I'm here. To see if you and I can't get together and talk this thing over a bit. You mean with Mother? I should think so. How did she know where I was? She didn't. It was my idea. Won't you come back with me now? No, not to her. I told her I'd never go back to that house again, and I won't, not as long as I live. After we've talked about it, if you still want to go away, I'm sure she won't object. I'll bet. You'd rather go to the court? You can't put me in jail. I haven't done anything. You sneaked on this pier, didn't you? Oh, sure. Maybe but... you can go to the cooler. What do you think that's up there for? Well, I didn't see that. That's another charge. Not noticeable. Why don't you come back with me now, Jerry? You got two choices. Go with him like he says, or I can ring for the wagon, whichever you want. All right, then. But I'm not going to stay there. It's up to you. I'm only interested in tonight. Much obliged to you, officer. He'll be all right. He's not a bad kid. How'd you figure this thing? Just took a chance. Your father told me how you used to take trips together. How the big plan was to sail away to South America someday. So here we are. That was pretty smart figuring. Thanks. something to eat? No, I'm not hungry. I'm terribly sorry. Leave me alone, will you? I'm all right. 
How did you do it? Just luck. I'm not going to stay here, you know. I told him already. Why not? She knows. Are you sure she does? Why shouldn't she? She knows the whole thing, but that didn't stop her from sending him out of his own house. If he hadn't had to keep going away all the time, he wouldn't have been on that plane. You think I don't know why he kept going away, too, but I do. I've known it all along. He went away to drink, didn't he? Yeah, but he couldn't help that. I know what drink is. It's a disease. He couldn't help himself any more than you can help from getting TB or pneumonia or anything like that. You're supposed to feel sorry for a man like that, not drive him away from his own home to be sick. He went away. Because he didn't want you to know, darling. Oh, sure. Everything was his fault. You didn't do anything. You just wouldn't talk to him. All you did was make him like a ghost, walking around all the time without saying anything. And all the time, he loved you more than he did me. He never said it, but he did. I could tell. And my loving him just wasn't enough for him. If you would prefer to leave, Mr. Trask. I'd still like to talk to him. Jerry, darling. I'm getting out of here. Jerry, let me go. Not until you promise to behave yourself for a few minutes. Let me go, I tell you. And get it through your head I didn't chase you all the way to Wilmington just to come back here and listen to a lot of whining nonsense. I know that you mean well, Mr. Trask, but that is not the way to handle my son. Would you be good enough to leave now? In just a few minutes, I promise you. But not until I've explained one thing to him about his father. I don't want to hear it. I'm afraid you'll have to, Jerry. What about his father? The other night, Dr. Fortness engaged me as his attorney for a matter that I'll explain in a minute. This, I believe, gives me something more than simply a busybody position here. I can't guarantee, of course, that this is precisely what he'd want me to do or say. But if I learned anything during our few hours together, it was that I was with a man who was prepared to go to any lengths to make up in any way, whatever, for the cruel, shocking, almost irreparable harm he'd done to the love and respect of his family. That's not true. What's not true? That he ever did any harm to his family. Five years ago, your father was in a dreadful automobile accident. Do you remember that? Of course. Three people were killed in that accident. Two in the other car, and his friend, Dr. Brooks, who was driving. Is that right? Yes. That's when all your troubles started, wasn't it? Yes, I guess so. Were you at the country club that night? No, I was home in bed. Why? Then you wouldn't know whether your father was drunk or not, would you? Who says he was? Wait a moment. Yes? What are you trying to do? Straighten him out, that's all. But you mustn't like that. I won't permit it. It'll only make things worse. How can things be worse? But you have no right to shake his faith in his father. Why, it's the most important thing that he has left in his life. I forbid you to say such things to him. But what if I told you that this is exactly what his father was planning to do, only a thousand times more shockingly? I don't know what you're talking about. You know the whole story of that night, don't you? Of course. Then you know a lie. It wasn't Dr. Brooks that was driving the car that night. It was your father, drunk. Did she tell you that? Of course not. He did. Well, I don't believe it. Is it true, Mrs. Fortness? Yes. And it was your mother who knew better, who heard your father tell that lie to the police, then lied herself to protect him. I can't believe it. It's true, Jerry. When you're thinking about it, try to understand this. It was an indecent thing that he did. But that didn't make him an indecent man. An indecent man would have enjoyed his escape. Only a decent man would have been lost in the shame and the horror of what he had done. I know all this, Mrs. Fortness, because Dr. Fortness engaged me to go with him to the district attorney to tell him the whole story. And whatever that would have meant, and I assure you he had no delusions about the possibilities, it would have been worth it to him if it brought back your respect for him. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.
Goodbye, Jerry. Mr. Trask. Yes? Tell me. Was he... Was he drinking when he told you this? Of course not. I don't take cases from drunks. Hempstead 3449, please. Hempstead, that's right. Club car. Is Mr. Michael Carr? Just a minute. Somebody wants to talk to Mr. Carr. I'll take it. Yeah, who wants him? He doesn't know me. Is this Miss Carr? Yes, who's this? I was on that plane Friday night. What plane? The, uh, well, that plane from Chicago. Well, what about it? Hello? I'm sorry. Just a minute. Hey, you! You were that vacuum cleaner. What's that rockhead's name? Hey, Henry, knock that off. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm talking on this phone? What is it you want? I think it's a matter I'd better take up with Mr. Carr first. When will he be in? You can try after dinner, about 9.30. Thank you. What's the matter with you, you blind? No. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'd like to see Mr. Michael Carr, please. Mr. Carr's about to go on now, sir. Would you like to wait at the bar? Oh, thank you. Gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a young man who really needs no introduction. You all know him very well. I know him even better. I give you Mr. Michael. Carr. Michael, what? Carr. Oh, go so stupid of me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Carr. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Thank you what? I'm terribly sorry, I forgot. Thank you, sister. <laughs> That's better. Try not to forget again, son. Mm. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, this happens to be Miss Carr's birthday. Oh, you pray, she ain't what she used to be. She ain't what she used to be. She ain't what she used to be. The old gray man, she ain't what she used to be. Very long years ago. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a favorite of mine, and I'm sure one of yours. A girl. Give me a coke. Miss Carr? Yes? My name is Trask. I spoke to you on the phone this afternoon. Oh, yes, but you'll have to wait until after the show now. Oh, that's all right. I'm enjoying it. This is the thrill Is it about Binky? Oh, well, yes. What are you, the lawyer? Well, I am a lawyer, yes. Well, if it's alimony she's after, you're wasting your time. He's not going to give her a nickel. Well, has she asked for any yet? No, but that's what you're here for. I know that, Dame. What'd she do, phone you the minute she got the notice? 
As a matter of fact, I, I'm only here to get a line on the situation. Nothing's been really... You want a line on the situation? I'll give you a line on the situation. I'll give you plenty of line on it. Come with me. Tell Carl I want to see him. Yes, ma'am. This doesn't happen. If ever a dame asked for it, it was that client of yours. I pegged her the minute I laid eyes on her. Sit down. She never cared a nickel for Mike. All she was after was the name and what she could get out of it. What do you mean, the name? Carr! My name. You know who I am, don't you? Very well, indeed. I'm an old vaudeville fan. Well, she knew it so well, she wanted it for herself. It don't hurt, you know, to have a famous name in this business. Come in! You know that boy, Henry? Yes, madam. Give him his money and get him out of here. What did you do? Didn't I say no serving during the show? Yes. Did you see what he was doing just now? Yes, but the party called him over. They're a little drunk, and I told him to go to the table. They might have made a fuss of some kind. Listen, I don't want to argue the matter. Just get him out of here, like I tell you. Yes, madam. How well do you know this dame? Not too well. I, I met her only once. Well, let me tell you something about her. If I'd been that girl's own mother, I couldn't have treated her any better, like my own blood daughter. I knew she was out for what she could get, but when I saw that my son thought he loved her, I nearly broke my back trying to make that marriage work. I see. But you wouldn't believe it, the abuse I had to take when he wasn't around. And such vulgarity you never heard in your life. But do you think I'd let him know it? I'd rather have cut off my right arm. Until last week. And then, heaven help me, I had to tell him. Well, uh, why last week? Because I couldn't stand to see him eating his heart out any longer. Not for that rip. I let him have it but good. And it was then that he decided to file suit? What else could he do when her already gone a year? Did she ever tell you the way she left here? No. I'll bet she didn't. Well, it was a Saturday afternoon about this same time last year. She'd really had one of her spells on that week. You should have seen her, Mr. Trask. You wish to see me, my child? The jerk tells me you don't want me to sing in the show. I do want you, Binky, dear, but I just don't think it would be advisable at this particular time. And I say that for your own good. Yellow, huh? I'm afraid I do not comprehend what it is that you mean by that. Scared, you dope. Scared if they ever hear me singing this crap, they'll throw rocks at you. You mortify me, Binky. What do you think I'm here for, anyway? Listen to that carnival show every night? Why do you think I married that goon? But I thought you loved me, darling. Why don't you go and fly a kite? But, Binky, dear. My son, my son. I'm here to get mine fat stuff, and the sooner you know it, the better. I'm sure you don't wish to be unfair, child. Do I sing or not? That's all I want out of you. As I've tried to explain, Binky, dear. OK, I get it. I got one more proposition for you. Anything within human reason, daughter. <laughs> want me to stay here, Ducky? No, I do, darling. Then tell Mumsy you and I want 50% interest in the joint. But, Binky, dear. You want me to stay or not, Ducky? Mumsy, darling, would you... Uh, could you see your way clear to... Mike, my own, you know I'd rather cut off my right arm than deny anything to you or Binky. But after all, you already have 5%. And unless something good turns up for me on Broadway, this little joint is all I have to provide for my few remaining years. But when I pass on, remember it will all be yours and hers, 100%. How about that, Binky? Sorry, so indefinite. 
How much you got in the till? Well, I don't Come know. Come on, exactly. let me have it. You can't do that, Binky. That's larceny. Shake it up. I'm cheaping out of here tonight. But if you take the money, Binky, we will have no change for the customers. Get out of my way. Let her have it, Arthur. Her need is greater than ours. That's the last we've seen of her. As Mike says, absolutely incredible. And after all we'd done for her. Beat it! I thought she was in there. My sympathies, of course, are entirely with you, but after what you've said, I find myself in rather an awkward position. I thought you would. Well, no, it's, it's not that. It's... Well, the fact is, I didn't come here about the divorce. I knew nothing about that until you mentioned it. Nor did Mrs. Carr when I spoke to her. I don't believe she even dreamed of such a thing. Then what was it? Well, as it turned out, you seem to have been in some error, at least on one point. Which one was that? Binky's professional talent. You ever hear her? No, I never did. You're lucky. Then I uh, take it you haven't heard about the audition. Audition for who? Rogers and Hammerstein, is it? Binky auditioned for Rogers and Hammerstein? For the Mary Martin part in South Pacific. Miss Martin's leaving to go into the London production. <laughs> well, that must have been a beaut. They asked her to audition after seeing her in Let's Go. What'd they say? Well, for a couple of days, nothing. They had lots of others to listen to, I imagine. And so she just had to sit and wait until last Thursday afternoon. Yes, this is Miss Binky Gay. Rogers and Hammerstein. They do? Both of them? Pretty lucky gal, really. Oh, don't I know it? There isn't a dame in this place who wouldn't give up half her alimony to be in your shoes tonight. Did you say there's going to be some more cast changes? Just a few, not everybody. What about Bloody Mary? We're going to get someone for her, too. That's a nice part. Nice? It's the kind of a part that comes along once in a generation. For an old doll, that's dream stuff. Remember Sally Carr? Sally Carr? You bet your life I do. Now, there really was a trooper. When she played the palace... Oh, what about her for Bloody Mary? Sally Carr? Why not? But holy smoke, is she still alive? Oh, very much so, and still belting him out as good as ever. Oh, Mr. Sorry, in that part, she'd be real terrific. She really would. Where did you dig her? She's my mom'sy. Uh, my mother-in-law, that is. We've had our little differences, but she's still a grand old gal with a heart of gold. And as Bloody Mary, she'd be sure heaven. 
Sally Carr is Bloody Mary. How can I get in touch with her? Oh, you needn't bother. I'll uh, phone a friend of mine out there tonight, and he'll go talk to her about doing it. But under the circumstances, I have no intention of embarrassing you with Mrs. Carr's suggestion. I had no way of knowing how inexcusably she treated you. Oh, believe me, I wouldn't have come out here and wasted so much of your time. You're Mr. Carr, aren't you? Pinky's husband. Uh, yes? Nothing. Oh, uh, could I see you outside for a moment? Just what I was about to suggest to you. Good night, Miss Carr. Idea. The idea originally was to bring you a piece of very tragic news. This? I got it just a few minutes ago. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Carr. Thank you. When did you see her? I was on that plane. Did you talk to her? Much? Quite a bit. We were seated together. Did she say anything, anything about why she was coming back? She uh, hadn't received the divorce notice, if that's what you mean. Are you sure? I'm positive. As far as she knew, she was coming home to you as ever. Thank you very much for that. As for that nonsense to your mother, I... Skip it. Just don't be in town when she finds out. <laughs> Thanks, I won't. The reason I didn't stop you myself, I mean really stop you, you were giving Binky such a beautiful success. The kind she always dreamed about. Never could have. Until you gave it to her. Good night, Mike. Good night, sir. Get me Valley 48269, please. Mrs. Hoke, you don't know me, but I was a passenger on that plane with your husband. I'm calling on Mrs. Hope. Oh, yes, sir. Will you come in? Thank you. You can go right in. She's expecting you. Thank you. Mr. Trask? Mrs. Hope? He showed you the picture, I see. Yes. And it was greatly admired, of course. But he didn't tell you how old it was. No. He never did, but you can see why. Sit there, will you? Thank you. It's very kind of you to do this. Not at all. It was Eddie who was responsible, as a matter of fact. There were four of us who spent a good deal of time together during the night. The Four Musketeers, he called us. The name seemed to establish some kind of bond between us, still. And are you going to see the other families, too? I have already. How grateful they must have been. That I'm not so sure of. Why not? I came in on people whose lives were not as uncomplicated as they might have been. Oh, good heavens, whose is? I don't know. Is yours? Of course not, nobody's is. That's what Binky said. One of the other musketeers. I'm sure that every single solitary person we see every day of our lives is trying to find his way out of one kind of problem or another. I suppose so. And in time, of course, they will. All of them? I imagine so, in time. I wish I could agree with you. You mean your own? Forgive me. 
This is hardly the moment to... Is it really so serious? To me, it couldn't be more so. Only to you? What do you mean? Not to your family, too? Well, to my children, of course. But not to your wife. You can't be interested in my problems. You know you can't. Where is she now? At home. Back home, you mean? That's it. And does she want to stay there now? She says she does. You doubt it? No. But I don't know that I care to be there with her. Even though you're still in love with her? Why do you assume that? You must, or there wouldn't be any problem. Janie, my wife, fell in love with another man. After 12 years and two children, that's what happened to our marriage. And it happened without my even suspecting it. Without my knowing anything about it at all, until it was all over. And she told me. She told you herself? That was a month ago. And I tried. I tried very hard to understand what had happened. And to find some way to accept a fact which I couldn't think of without dying a little. But it was no use. I couldn't do it. Have you ever thought of it the other way around? That's always the woman's argument. And that's always the man's way of dodging an answer to it. It's different. I wish it weren't, but it is. Have you talked to her since you went away? Once, on the phone. What did she say? She cried. But it's the memory of that mistake. It's the memory of someone else always between us. And I don't believe I'd ever be able to support it. Few men can. I know. Only the strongest. Many, many wives, of course, but only a few very strong husbands. Perhaps. I'm sorry, I had no right to say that. Would you care for a drink? No, I don't think so, thank you. How did you like Eddie? Quite well. He was a lot of fun. Too many jokes, you mean? No, not at all. We had a very pleasant time together. Most people detested him. Oh, no, I can't believe that. Loud, dull, vulgar, always horning in where he wasn't wanted. I don't believe that's a fair description of him at all. Don't you? No, I don't. I do, because that's what he was. A tiresome, foolish, irritating man. And even after all these years, I still can't think what it was that made me marry him. Of course, I was flighty myself in those days, and perhaps I thought he was fun, and that marriage with him would be one long laugh. If that was it, though, I was wrong. So naturally, there came a day when I looked for happiness somewhere else. Late, am I? No, I'm just nervous anyway. We're okay now. Turn off Ellen. Okay. Was there any trouble? He wasn't there. He flew to San Francisco this afternoon. You didn't tell him? Uh-uh. What about when he gets back? Won't he go to the police or something? Oh, I left a note. Saying what? Just that I was going away, that's all. Not who with? No, nothing else. Well, it doesn't matter. We know what we're doing. I'm not worrying. When do you figure we'll get to Chicago? I don't know. I don't see any reason why we ought to break any records, do you? 
you know. But we might uh, take it easy, stop off here and there, and see a bit of the country while we're above it. Oh, I'd like that. You'll never make it. Okay, wise guy. I don't know yet. What did you do? Hit the raft? Did I? Okay. Okay. The car? Yes, sir. You go right ahead. I'll get the bag. Lake 2, 2000. Is it serious? It's possible. St. Luke's? This is Dr. Fernwood. I want an ambulance sent to the Chicago and Hotel on State Street. Thank you. What is it? Let's sit down. How'd she get that bump on her head? In a lake. She dived, came up under a raft. Mm. Cigarette? No, thanks. How long ago was that? Last Thursday morning. Yeah. Well? That's it, I imagine. Without getting technical about it, she seems to be suffering from a blood clot on the brain. Subdural hematoma. That's the way those things usually start, from some blow on the head. How could that be? She was perfectly all right the next day, just a little headache. Yes, I know. That's the way they develop, too, very slowly. Will you have to operate? Yes, we're getting her ready now. There's already a partial paralysis, and her breathing's been affected, and that's why I thought we shouldn't waste any more time. You mean she's liable to die? No, I didn't say that. It's a delicate operation, but it's very rarely fatal. What is quite possible, though, and I think you ought to be prepared for it, is a residual effect. Some degree of paralysis afterwards. I'm afraid that's fairly common in these cases. She'd be paralyzed afterward? It's quite possible. 
to some extent. Doctor. I see. Well, is she conscious this morning? I see. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. This is Mr. Nelson in 1267. Yes, will you get my bill ready right away, please? I'm checking out. Thank you. It was a week before I could bring myself to realize that he'd gone away and left me. By then, it didn't seem to matter. Nothing did. Nothing. In this whole wide, empty world. Mrs. Oak? I am beautiful. Dull, foolish, vulgar to some. But not to me. To me, he was a man like a rock. Nothing could shake him. Nothing could shake his love. It was from him I learned what love really was. Not a frail little fancy to be smashed and broken by pride and vanity and self-pity. That's for children. That's for high school kids. But a rock as strong as life itself. Indestructible and eternal. your phone. Certainly. It's a long distance. I'd like to speak to Mrs. David Trask, person to person, at Prairie 4267, Midland City, Iowa, and reverse the charge. Now, this is Mr. Trask. Valley 48269. That's right. And they're ringing now.
There's no answer. Well, she's out. Well? Well, it's nearly midnight there. Oh, for the love of Pete. Well, I don't understand it. We've got children there. She's got no Hello, right to... Dave? Hello? Hello, Dave? Hello? 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 Hello, Janie? Where have you been? Up on the roof? Phone's been ringing for a... Shower? At midnight? Of course, darling. You know I always take a shower every night. Don't you remember? Oh. Oh, yeah, sure. How are you? We're all fine. How are you? I'm fine. How are the kids? I told you they're fine. That's fine. What is it, darling? Well, Janie, I've been thinking about it. And the way things are, if... If it's all right with you, uh... You get on that plane. What? Don't, don't you wait for the train. You know I do, Janie. Hurry up, darling. Just get on the plane. I and am, right you away. Know what the schedule is, so the Absolutely, honey. I'm getting the first plane out. I... Now you get on that plane. But... Don't you wait for the train. And we'll all but... come down and meet you. Listen, listen, darling. Do you but... have any idea about the schedule? So... But don't you even want to hear why? Take you when we see a show The horror picture movie is the place to go You wrap your arms around me when the show begins Cause it scares you right out of your bobby pins We do the Frankenstein rock We do the Frankenstein rock Oh, you quiver and you shiver and you shake it with fright It's the only time I ever get to hold you tight Old Frankie's so tremendous he's got stitches in his head he meets a teenage werewolf and forgets he's dead. They call the zombies over and they have a ball. Then Dracula returns and he scares them all. We do the prank.